He is the first European Olympic 100 meter champion since 1992. He attributes part of his success to seeing a sports psychologist. Shortly after taking home gold, he split with his nutrition coach who was investigated for steroid allegations. He was reportedly hospitalized last minute before his 100 meter debut and as part of his training runs with a car on the track. Marcel Jacobs is unpredictable. In this video, we're going to look at Jacobs unusual training methods and how we can apply some of his strategies to our own training. The first training method is this technology that Marcel Jacobs team uses to analyze his performance. It's called Opto Jump, and what it does is it measures ground contact time, flight time, and speed among other important metrics. The main component are these two bars on the ground and a webcam that connects to a laptop. If all this sounds great, then all you're going to need is about 30,000 euros cash to get you set up with 10 meters of this equipment. On the other hand, if you don't have 30 racks laying around here is what you can do instead. You can download the Dartfish app directly onto your phone. Coaching athletes online, this is something that I use heavily. Rather than training blindly, we can specifically target our weak points, which is why I don't even recommend doing everything that we see professional athletes like Marcel Jacobs doing. Although it does make for an interesting video and there's certainly lessons we can take, different things are gonna work for different people. And even more important than what training tools we use is how we use them. Otherwise, Olympic champions wouldn't be using tens of thousands worth of equipment to collect all this data. The second training method we're gonna take a look at is the use of Nordic sticks. I've seen people using them before. I didn't think it'll be something that elite athletes would be using in their training. Never crossed my mind, not even for a second, until I made this video following Marcel Jacobs' win at the Tokyo 100 meter finals, where someone made a comment about him training with Nordic sticks. Turns out it's something he uses to fix a problem that's rarely talked about in relation to sprinting, sinking the arms and legs. It's well established that the body works as a system and in order for the body to perform at the highest level possible, the system must work together effectively. This is a concept I learned from studying under high level physical therapists. A great book on this is called Anatomy Trains by Tom Myers, which was recommended to me by Vinny Rehab, physical therapist and founder of Mild Detox. In sprinting, one underrated aspect of the arms is its role in helping the legs generate power. To do so, they must operate in perfect sync. In this article, Marcel Jacobs' first coach states that Marcel trained with Nordic walking sticks to perfect arm leg coordination and neuromuscular prior perception of feet and ankles. An unusual yet creative solution to an important problem. The third training method we're going to look at is quarter squats. Before sprinting, I was heavy into the powerlifting community where as to grass is life and if you don't hit proper depth, you're committing a major sin. However, when it comes to performance, squatting until your drawers hit the ground isn't always necessary. In fact, research suggests that shorter ranges of motion during the squat leads to greater desirable effects on sprint performance among highly trained athletes. The benefit of these type of squats is that it trains our body for top speed because it allows you to load much heavier and only works through a limited range of motion, similar to the position and forces seen during top speed. The fourth training method we're gonna look at is hyper prioritization. According to reports, leading up to Tokyo, Marcel Jacobs coach was focused on increasing his stride frequency, meanwhile preserving his stride length. In other words, getting his legs to move faster while making sure the distance between each contact remained the same. Two factors that we must constantly juggle when working to become faster. Rather than trying to improve both at the same time, they focus on improving one while maintaining the other. For someone taller, typically stride length is a strong point as a result of longer legs. Meanwhile, stride frequency is weaker for the same reason. We can see the opposite in someone like Sue, who might not have the longest strides, but has insanely fast stride frequencies. However, finding our weak points goes beyond how tall we are and inside the sprint boot camp, I talk about this further. According to reports, Kamosi, the coach of Marcel Jacobs states, we have reached 4.57 movements per second and 45 foot supports during the 100 meters. This is why it's so important to analyze performance in order to find the biggest opportunities for improvement and monitor progress. We can do this using timing gates, video analysis with tools like Dartfish and force velocity profiles. But the main lesson here is that at a certain level, it could serve us better to pick one aspect of performance to improve on while maintaining the others. The fifth and final training method we're gonna look at 
is the most unusual method on this list by far. Tell me this isn't one of the most strange yet interesting tools in the history of track. It was reportedly created by the Connie Institute of Sports Science. Apparently, it comes from an idea that dates as far back as 1987 by Professor Antonio Dal Monte, head of physiology and biomechanics at the Coney Institute. The idea behind it is that the shield reduces wind resistance so that the athlete behind it can reach higher speeds with the same amount of effort. For example, by conserving energy in his acceleration through reducing wind resistance, he can use more of that energy to develop his top speed. And considering his wind resistance is reduced even at top speed, not only does he have more energy in the tank after his acceleration phase, but in theory would allow him to reach higher top speeds and maintain it for longer in competition. Overspeed training oftentimes gets a bad reputation because of how much it can disrupt technique. However, this approach can actually help improve technique because there's nothing attached to your body. You don't have to worry about the wind hitting you in the face. And most of all, they even mounted the opto jump onto this windshield, which allows his coach to put Marcel Jago's performance under a magnifying glass even at top speed. These guys are really out here playing Iron Man with this guy's training. These are some of the unusual training methods that Marcel Jacob uses. If you're really interested in how elite athletes run faster, you can watch this video, which goes over how to analyze your performance using only an app in your cell phone. It's backed by research and used by Olympic as well as NFL speed coaches. Click here to watch that video next.